Welcome to the first story. The first story we're going to start with is The Very Greedy Bee. And this is by Steve Smallman and illustrated by Jack Tickle. Okay, so I'm going to read a page and then I will show you the picture. So first off, that's pretty cool. It's just the inner cover, but it's still pretty cool. In a busy, buzzy beehive lived a very greedy bee. All the other bees worked hard making honey and cleaning the hive. But the greedy bee spent all day gobbling pollen and guzzling nectar. Slurp, slurp, burp. Slurp, slurp, burp. The greedy bee wouldn't share his nectar with anyone. He wouldn't even let a tired ladybug sit on his flower. Find your own flower, he shouted. This one is mine. Mine! It's not very nice, is it? And when one day the greedy bee found a meadow full of the biggest, juiciest flowers he had ever seen, he decided not to tell anyone. Yummy, he buzzed. Lots and lots of flowers. And they're all for me. Wow. The greedy bee whizzed and bizzed from flower to flower, slurping and burping and growing fatter and fatter and fatter and fatter until at last his tummy was full and he settled down on a pink flower in the warm yellow sunshine and fell fast asleep. Zzzz. What's going to happen? When the greedy bee woke up, it was dark. He tried to fly. But his tummy was so roly-poly that biff, bang, thump. He went down instead of up and crashed biff, bang, thump to the ground. Uh-oh. I'm scared, cried the greedy bee, and I don't know how to get home. Then he saw two glowing eyes in the long grass. Eek, he cried, a monster is coming to eat me. But it wasn't a monster. It was two friendly fireflies, their bottoms glowing in the dark. What's wrong? they asked. I'm too full to fly, wailed the greedy bee, and I can't walk home in the dark. Follow us, said the fireflies, and they all set off on the long, long journey home. Through forests of flowers and squishy mud, over the hills and under the stars, trudged the greedy bee. He had never walked so far, and he was very tired. Nearly there, called the fireflies. Then they heard the whoosh of rushing water. He 
He looks pretty tired. I'm almost home, cried the greedy bee excitedly. It's the stream. And it was. But his hive was on the other side of it. Uh-oh. Oh, no, said gr the greedy bee, sadly flopping down on the grass. How will I ever get across? We'll help you, said a tiny ant with a big leaf. See, there's the ant. There. There's the ant up there, willing to help. The ant and his friends flipped the big leaf into the water. Jump on, they cried. Helped by the fireflies, the greedy bee and the ants made their way, splishing and splashing, to the other side of the stream. Hooray! I'm home, cheered the greedy bee. Where have you been? asked the other bees. I overslurped, said the greedy bee. I would have never made it home if my new friends hadn't been so kind. Now I'm going to share my best honey with them. Would you like some too? Yes, said the other bees. Let's have a party. Everyone enjoyed a midnight feast of yummy, runny honey, all except for one very sleepy, very happy, but not so greedy bee. The end. So, in this book we learned that we can't be greedy that we need to share with others and be kind to others. Okay, head on over to our other story. Bye!